You're listening to Fishing the DMV with your hosts, Thomas Ahrens and Jared Mounts. Fishing the DMV is brought to you by Jake's Bait and Tackle, located in Winchester, Virginia. If that doesn't get you jacked up, I don't know what will. Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to Fishing the DMV. I'm your host, Thomas Ahrens. I'm Jared Mounts with Jake's Bait and Tackle. So we got two special uh, guests that uh, had a big tournament, didn't they? Yeah, so uh, these two guys, young young guns, I'll call them young sticks uh, in Shandoah Valley Bass, but they're they're very competitive. They're sitting, I think, fifth right now overall, and in, in, I think it's about a 40 people registered, 30, 30 to 40 boat field, uh, mm-hmm. several tournaments in. And uh, I'm going to let them introduce themselves, but uh, Jesse Gardner and Jacob uh, Alwine, um, Guys, tell us, before we get into Smith Mountain, mm-hmm. they had a first and a second down yeah, there. Get a little backdrop. Um, before we get into that tournament, uh, just kind of tell us a little bit, tell our viewers a little bit about yourself and where you're from and and maybe uh, how you grew up fishing and how you fell in love with fishing. Yeah, go ahead. All right, I'm Jesse. Um, I was very fortunate growing up. Uh, my family had a river lot over in Bentonville on okay, the other cool. side. Yeah. So... Dad was never competitive fishing, but he got a spinning rod in my hand and a four-inch zoom lizard, and there you go. off we went to the river wading and everything else. So that was a blast. That's um, cool. He taught me, I guess, fishing all the pockets and all the little, mm-hmm. the current and everything, and casting up and dragging the bait back through the current. Okay. Which I have found that huge. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What we do now, so mm-hmm. yeah, I was just very fortunate with that. Yeah, and kind of similar upbringing, you know, we're, you know, country boys, if you will, you know, I mean, grew up, uh, you know, my dad got, you know, I started off at the little local trout farms, Mm -hmm. you know, so honestly, I started kind of trout fishing, Um, you know, so how's that apply to, you know, what we're doing now, like he's talking about, you know, kind of fishing current, Mm -hmm. Um, so that's kind of how I grew up, I mean, that's how trout live, you know, Mm -hmm. the powerful fish, Um, that transition to the river, you know, fishing smallmouth kayaks and stuff. Never had a boat or anything. We had a Coleman Crawl to a John boat oh, cool. and, and a kayak, you know, gig. So between the North Fork of the Shenandoah, um, um, Lake Laura back at uh, mm-hmm. Basie, mm-hmm. Um, a little bit of Lake Frederick, mm-hmm. um, and then just kind of whoever's farm pond, you know, mm-hmm. that we had permission. That's kind of how I started fishing. And uh, always been competitive in sports and stuff, though, but never mm-hmm. uh, kind of crossed the two until, you know, he kind of introduced me to it. And we linked up and man it's it's been a blast and something that i hope to always you know kind of have a part of me so so backdrop in sports like like you guys said like you had a background in other sports mm-hmm. what did you guys do besides fishing growing up i did soccer basketball and then mainly motocross so i got into that by my neighbor who lived next to me um huh. that started in eighth grade hmm. i remember and i actually won two championships at a local track holy shit congrats oh, that's, that's awesome yeah, that's pretty um, cool. i got to do a couple national races that was a blast and then unfortunately grew up and this is now my adrenaline <laughs> this is more addicting now yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah and you know i didn't have the whole motocross thing but i grew up riding four wheelers and stuff you know um kind of you know speed and you know just mm-hmm. adrenaline rush you know mm-hmm. dad um had a uh, blown alcohol race car actually a you know, mud wow. car when he was younger before my time mm-hmm. uh but you know i kind of always had that connection with him uh, i guess in a sense and uh you know then playing basketball uh big golfer also um then realized you know got out of high school from playing basketball you know then started picking up men's league and mm-hmm. <laughs> ended up breaking my ankle you know oh, 20 gosh. you know 22 years old or something you know gimped mm. up you know uh you out on disability i'm like hmm, uh. maybe this isn't uh th- this kind of sucks this isn't quite uh they do something a little bit <laughs> uh you know with a, still the adrenaline you yeah. know in, in com- competition but uh you know not where i'm stepping on basketballs and people's ankles oh, you know man. so how old are you guys i'm 27 okay. yeah i'm 26 how'd you find shando valley bass so I got in through it. Shout out to Justin Rush. I okay. got in yeah. from Jason Ford. Okay. Good. So it's funny because my dad bought a bass boat, a little Tracker 175, mm-hmm. and he mm-hmm. would let me use it. But I never told him I was on tournaments in it. <laughs> so, hey, Dad, you mind if I use the boat this weekend? And Justin and I, we fished that first year. We got destroyed. I mean, we okay. Did. But then the second year, we got on a little bit of a run. We finished first at Anna because it was a two day or from yep. COVID or whatever. And yep. then the following weekend was the chick. Okay. Day one and day two, we got, I think fourth on day one and then first on day two. All right. I think we ended up eighth overall that year okay. in the points. And then 
yeah. you Justin moved on and how yeah. I picked up Jacob. <laughs> yeah, so you know that I know that COVID year because you know, we've kind of worked together, um, okay. you know, for some time. As, <laughs> you yeah. know, we're imagine shirts in your know, same company. It's <laughs> it's funny how life works, but you know, um, so we were actually working together at a different position you know mm-hmm. and i know when COVID hit that season you know you guys had like tournaments i think jared i think you yeah. fished that year i mean yeah. it was tournaments like weekend after weekend and right. it was like man yeah, shut off and then yeah it was like back to back back yeah. to back, back, yeah. back and he's like man i don't think i can do that again <laughs> so we were like well what if we join next year and you know, just kind of fish intermittently mm-hmm. and you know justin you know great friend of ours you know heck of a fisherman too you know and mm-hmm. you know, he was super into it and he's like well you guys figure it out i'm fishing every weekend or whatever you know <laughs> okay. and so needless to say we linked up well you know obviously intermittent fishing turned into finding every tournament you could <laughs> you know so yeah. we're fishing full svba uh and then we try to hit the sunday series okay, at Lake yeah. Ann every once in a while mm-hmm. um you know we've had some decent luck down there uh yeah. awesome awesome tournament spread those guys put on as well but uh shout out to svba man yeah i think it's been a merger of leagues you know mm-hmm. so it's a totally different mm-hmm. you know level i think of competition okay. as opposed to like when you started yeah it um, definitely yeah. has grown uh, yeah since but awesome camaraderie, man. I love talking to the yes. people, you know, some of the guys with a lot more experience yes. and just going out there and fishing. So we love it. And that's a cool thing too. And it is, it's a really good, like you said, really good league, very competitive, but yet they're, mm. they're not like so competitive that, you know, that, All right. and so, and it is cool. We talked earlier too, like, even I remember when Brian, even, I even got in, like, you know, we're not, not that great. And it's kind of like, how are we going to compete here with these guys that have are experienced and been doing this a long time and but you guys have shown that you know you've come in and, and been very competitive so mm-hmm. uh, let's jump into the like so smith mountain lake and one thing we talked about too this was the same for us uh you didn't have much experience where we were launching out of we no. ended up 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 lake whereas before we've launched down uh down lower near the mm-hmm. dam uh so we're now up lake so what what are some things you guys did like pre-tournament to, to yeah. prepare yourself for this lake big lake tournament and we'll, we'll just go Work slowly through it, it yeah. every single day of it yeah i think this is the man right here um <laughs> he, he did some research i mean we both are very you know i wouldn't say tech savvy but mm. mapping navionics and mm. that type of deal what are you running um so i have garments okay. uh so i we just upgraded electronics i mean look we've like bare bones you know last year yeah. i think we had little two or two little Oops. five inch you know hooks <laughs> or no helixes yeah. Yeah, little helix fives yeah. and we're like all right we need to do something you know so invested in some garments you know the you know um you know the side down that okay. type of deal you know very clear stuff and we we're like holy crap this is <laughs> this is night and day you know yeah um but then just navionics on on your phone right, and google right. earth mm-hmm. and you know i'll let him take it off because i mean hats off to him for the research he did mm-hmm. well like dad always said you don't have to have the fastest boat because we are the smallest boat yeah. in the field. <laughs> yeah. you just gotta be able to fish yeah you just gotta be able to float right so, so that's it float. yeah make sure the plug's that's in and, and, and go get it you know so that's what makes doing good even better yeah. honestly but like it. we it's not a disadvantage but we got to take that yeah. into consideration on a big old body of water like uh, that. that's right so we knew we couldn't run that far and we got that win last year on smith mountain which yeah. we a friend actually let me borrow a z8 or c7 nitro mm-hmm. so we could run a little bit there mm-hmm. but yeah we were on a totally different body of water and i was at work and i had two tabs open i had my uh, navionics tab and google earth now I was sitting there, I'd find places on Google Earth and switch over to Navionics and check the contour lines and got those, well, I thought was decent contour lines. So what are you I, looking for? The tighter group okay. where, you know, the deeper access water. to mm-hmm. deeper water, to mm-hmm. shallow water off of, I f- was guessing they'd maybe be on secondary points. Mm-hmm. I didn't know where that lake was going to be mm-hmm. at there. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I was probably all three stages, mm-hmm. honestly. Yeah. All right. So... so I'll uh, since we yeah, like yeah. go down this rabbit hole. Uh, so going into it, um, and you don't have to give up spots, but were you were you thinking, looking at your mapping, were you looking at the lower end, the middle, or the upper? And then how many points were you looking for? Just to find one? Did you want a thousand? Like, what were you looking for to duplicate? So we went, it was mid lake or whatever. Yep. So if you came out and went right and went okay. down, there was that island. And then it kind of split into those two. Mm-hmm. It was like two big. It was. It's probably the two largest creek arms mm-hmm. I think on mm-hmm. that end without yeah. running up the Roanoke River. Mm-hmm. Um, they I mean, they're pretty distinct on the mapping. Um, and we went to the second one down yeah. or whatever, and there was like it was a big old peninsula. It almost could have been an island. I mean, yeah. it was only about ten feet across to make it a wow. peninsula. Okay. And it was like a bowl right there, probably like, 70, 80 yards deep on each side. You know, yeah. That's, so, so we're like, 
we'll start there because we didn't get to pre fish it. We rolled in yeah, there at okay. 10 o'clock. Yeah, we got there 10 o'clock at Bedford. The night before Bedford. You yeah, know? so yeah. we rolled in. I think we do the best when we don't pre fish. A lot of people say that. Yeah, we're there's not a yeah. ton of anglers out there. Yeah. Even on the Elite Series, mm -hmm. you're Christy. Like some of them talk about that. Sometimes, I mean, each to their own, but sometimes pre fishing can kind of put you on the wrong track mm -hmm. as well. And it doesn't. There's an art to pre-fishing yeah. making it benefit you. Correct. A lot of times it, it mm -hmm. will hurt you. I mean, yeah. I, and, and you guys that follow the channel at home, you guys know this. Like, you know, my brother and I in college, we would fish tournaments where we would get like two weeks of practice in, and we've done that where it's helped and hurt, and we've mm -hmm. had times you roll out of bed. And I think it's mm -hmm. also like seasonal dependency. Mm -hmm. Like, if the fish are set in their patterns, you can pre-fish mm -hmm. them and know they're going to be there. But if it's the springtime like it is now, they're just moving so freaking much. Right. It can really hurt you. But but getting back to it, was this just the, like, so you guys get up there in the morning, you're going to go to this first spot. Was this all you had? Did you have backup plans in your mind? We were going to hit every secondary point all the way back and try to figure out and okay. then go into kind of the creeks of those secondary points mm -hmm. and just just work them. See where they're at. Just, yeah, just yeah. go fishing. I mean, I, I don't know where I heard this from, but a spook for post-spawn or mm -hmm. whatever. So that was my topwater bait. I've Smart. never thrown one in my life. Really? <laughs> had one in the box. It, wow. First time throwing a spook. You're kidding me. Wow. Well, and good then, for you though it, man. this kid awesome. man he i mean it, the the dedication he had to a top water because i mean yeah. yeah obviously it's a fun bite and see so i like i have some salt water experience so i've like thrown like mirror okay. lures and poppers and stuff you know on salt water and but i've never like really applied it to bass fishing mm -hmm. and you know so he he i've seen him catch top water fish before not on a spook but he just picks this thing up i think it's like a lucky craft or something mm -hmm. i don't know Thanks, yeah. and it Starts and, walking the dog with him, and, yeah, and, but exactly. just beautiful, you know. And yeah. I think it was first the, cast. it was the first cast. Oh my god! And something oh. just smacked it, you know. I mean, we didn't see the fish, yeah, but I mean, it, it smacked it. I mean, you heard the wake, and, <laughs> and, and that I, just starts I the heart even. Yeah, more. And so like, I didn't oh. see it, but I heard it, and I was like, oh. And, but then <laughs> with, at the same time, at the same time, <laughs> I'm like, man, I'm glad he didn't catch that fish. Yeah, that first, first cast, that yeah. first cast yeah. fish, man, you know. And but so so like he said. And then kind of transfer over what he found, you know, upgrading the electronics, we were able to find, I mean, we're not like looking at every boulder or rock, yeah. we're able to follow those contour lines and just kind of work them back, you know, okay. and kind of seeing what type of action we got. Um, you know, he, he got that first hit. So he kept throwing it. I threw, I threw, saw, I threw a popper, I yeah, think, he, he and uh, nothing really happened. Uh, but something him and I do really well, I feel like, and, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, but if something's like on fire, you know, we'll, we'll pick it up. We'll both throw it. Mm -hmm. But if we're still trying mm -hmm. to figure something out and mm -hmm. at this point it was really early, you know, we're going to try to work different areas mm -hmm. of the water column. So Good he idea. had the confidence and the trust to hold that top water stick in his hand, you know, and keep throwing that bait. Mm -hmm. I was like, okay, I'll try to throw, you know, I think I picked up a chatter bait and I got a bite, <laughs> ended up getting hung up, broke off the chatter bait. <laughs> and then, so, um, then I've worked around with a couple of different things and then mm -hmm. ended up resorting to a little square bill, uh, like a kind of mid diving square bill. And that's kind of what we, I mean, that's kind of what we started to run. Yeah. But then we moved on to the next secondary point. Yeah. And you, had to, you, haven't, you haven't caught any fish yet. No, you had so one, one blow up, but no fish. Yeah. Right. We kind of spent a half an hour mm -hmm. out there and then yeah. we're like, all right, we got to move. So we moved back. Yep. There was a dock on the back side of that point. And I cast it and just barely hit the, the, run of the steps mm -hmm. and it fell in two walks and whoosh yeah that fish oh, came up out of there freaking and awesome. swallowed it i get it in and it's bleeding like a stuck pig yeah so we actually had to cut the spook and run it out the back side of the gills are wow. you serious yeah, yeah and he's bleeding bleeding this was like what three and a half three something like that oh, yeah he, he was a yeah he was so a solid I, fish so he choked we it. oh yeah choked yeah. it but we always carry a coker um mountain dew in the cooler so I told him to get a coke out. We cracked that and poured it on the gills. Stop, Stop that the bleeding. bleeding and we talked about yeah, that. We just and we, did. Yeah. we had <laughs> a, just had an episode and talked about both those things about backing hooks out through the gill, like yeah. you just said, and, yeah. and talk about that. It's good information. That was the first time we had to do it too. Good, I mean, my first time. Yeah. Ever, uh, so. And that first too, fish survived. Crazy. Good. Yeah, so yeah. I mean, not only are we, you know, obviously we want to, we need this fish for the tournament, yeah. but you know, we're big. I mean. We've always been catching and release, you know, growing mm -hmm. up, you know, on these fisheries that are pressured, you know, mm -hmm. we've had fish kills on the river, you know, it's a lot of people think like, oh my gosh, you're hurting mm -hmm. this fish, you're killing this fish. And we're looking at each other like, man, we need to keep this fish yeah, healthy yeah. and get her yeah. back, you yeah. know? And so, I mean, it worked out like a dream. We cut the braid, right? The knot, 
was able to work it out through the gills totally on and interrupted yeah. and got awesome. the coke on it stopped the bleeding there was not a drop of blood in the well is, is that amazing. really yeah. impressive yeah. with a treble and this is a three pounder it yeah. is a three pounder right. yeah. so then we go back kind of through there and catch a little I don't know, he's like three inches long yeah. <laughs> i don't even know why he grabbed a hold of the spook and then <laughs> yeah i mean the spook was bigger than he was yeah. i mean i'm like so, come on buddy <laughs> so, then we go back out and then back down to the next i don't know what the points are called is yeah. they're secondary yeah. points what you yeah. keep yeah. moving back and there's this big old rock about the size of this table right up against the point or whatever and there's this little channel of water maybe four foot wide but it, i could tell it was deep so we were actually going to work that edge because there was all this brush and stuff in the water well i noticed all these shad getting mm. pushed up against the mm. bank made a perfect cast in there once again one or two walks with that thing and he came out of the water and demolished that mm. thing swallowed yeah. it again this was that four and a half. Yeah. Wow. This is when you know you got the right bait. Yeah. You're choking yeah. it like that. I mean, same thing. Started bleeding like mm. a stuck pig. We had yeah. to do the same exact thing. This one we were able to get out of the front, I think. Yeah, yeah, we got them, we got got them healthy. But out. I mean, they were, I mean, and it's not like he was letting it sit there either. I mean, yeah. it, this was, I mean, this was a oh, reaction yeah. strike. He said, no, but do. I mean, they yeah. were just pounding Choking it. it. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. and just prior to that, I had actually, I was like, okay, he caught that, you know, that three pounder. So I tied on a frog because we, we, this bank we were going to go down, you know, there's a bunch of overhanging brush and stuff like that. And I was going to see if we, you know, get the frog up in the shade lines, mm -hmm. you know, up under that brush, you can skip it. And I had, I don't know, maybe a pound, pound and a half, kind of follow it up and just look at it. And, but then that's when we look back at this that little point behind this dock very similar to what he caught the three pounder on that, that he was like man look at this shad you know busting up there or whatever they were and like he saw the dorsal fins on this fish <laughs> and i'm i'm like you know you know what are the chances you catch that fish you know he's mm -hmm. pushing all types of bait and like he said man he dumped that thing in there just perfect and it was like doop, doop hammered it oh, man. that's and the best feeling ever. it is a great and it, it, you can't beat a top water yeah, you can't. and that yeah. fish jumped and i was like oh i mean yeah. i i don't even think <laughs> i got my line and i threw the rod down i had the net i mean and i was like okay we you know something something's going Two on fish, here seven and a half pounds. so you got seven and a half pounds like yeah. what was your vibe going into this tournament how much weight you need like were you thinking all of a sudden like oh shit we got a chance here or our goal is 10 pounds every time uh, yeah. honestly i mean <laughs> it's 10 pounds it's not bad. i mean it's yeah it's to, to at least be in the mix you yeah. know and you feel good you catch i mean obviously you catch five i mean some of these lakes are pressured you right. know i mean so you catch five fish you're doing well but like you said 10 pounds yeah I mean, five and then 10 pounds that's yeah. kind right, of right, right right yeah and kind of so. going back to last year you know down there you know i think we finished just shy of 15 pounds but I think he felt pretty good about it, but didn't want to get me too hyped. Yeah. I was like, there's no way. Or at least too competitive. Like, you know, somebody's going to come in an 18, 19 pound mm -hmm. bag. So at this point, you know, you're going back to now, you know, yeah, we had two good fish in the boat, mm -hmm. but we're, we're still, we're grinding, right? right. We're still trying to find, mm -hmm. okay, let's, let's keep this going. Sounds you like know. you got a pattern that's working though. For yeah. Like you're part. in a good area, yeah. pattern's yeah. working. Yeah. It has but, been weird this year, too, because I was at the Chick Tournament, and it's like you're expecting, like, it's going to take 25 oh, yeah. pounds. And out of the four tournaments that apparently launched that day, like, what, 13 or 14 was the biggest. Like, mm -hmm. all right, I didn't expect that at all. <laughs> well, the thing people don't realize, too, about competitive fish, just like you're talking about, you don't know what is going to win it. You yeah. have an expectation, but, you know, to your point, you got to get five fish, and it's like you don't know if you, – you might have 20. You don't know if it's going to hold oh, yeah, up, but, you know, yet 12 might win it. So you just mm -hmm. never know. Yeah. That's why you got to keep fishing, yeah. keep grinding out, like you said. Yeah. So you got the two. You got seven and a half pounds yeah. now. And what time is it? What where are we at now? <sighs> that was probably ten o'clock. Yeah. And one thing about Saturday as opposed to Sunday, which I know we'll jump to, but Saturday it stayed overcast. Mm, and yeah. Cool. Yeah, I mean, I think we, st day. we still had our bibs on. Like, yeah. I mean, not cold, but you know. Yeah. And I think we had Powerful. a little slow drizzle. You know, yeah, it rained there. Fog. For yeah. Well, and mm -hmm. so it set up perfect for a top water. Mm -hmm. You know, and. um so yeah i think i think that, that turned off though it, eventually yeah at this point it's probably what 9 30 9 30 10 o'clock yeah something like that yeah, jared did you find a top water bite when you were down yeah there, so we like yeah everyone? we were in a cove and not so i started with a whopper plopper one okay. of the bigger ones mm -hmm. i don't know what number it is but 110 or something and yeah i had um i was on a shoal on a point and and i had like a four and a half pounder blow up on it and the funny thing about that one um might be able to put the picture in, in the link or whatever but yeah absolutely it had it had a broken back jerk bait that was stuck here and stuck down below the gill oh and you wow can see oh where the line was broke off so this thing is you know got treble hooks in it 
and it's still eating, still, eating, still eating, blowing hard. up. Like so, I had that one, and I think two and three quarter smallmouth nice. that we had worked through. Shadow, like you're saying, we'd worked through one time back in a cove, and I and I think I was working like a big TRD, nothing spinner bait, chucked a spinner bait in there, tried reaction bite, nothing. Went back, we came back through. I said, let me throw the plopper back in there, and this smallmouth just destroyed it. To you know, to your point, so it was kind of like, it was interesting i don't know mm-hmm. if that small mouth was cruising mm-hmm. if it was there the first my first two presentations with different lures i don't know but yeah but yes your mm-hmm. question top water was definitely it's i love that play. when you interview a couple of people from the same tournament yes. and you find these through lines like with the chick it was you know isolated cypress trees but mm-hmm. we're a top water bite on smith it's just so mm-hmm. weird how no matter where you are in the lake piece anglers mm-hmm. will figure out kind of mm-hmm. like this this through line and to your point the overcast i think helped too i mean that definitely yeah it helps you with the top water up? bite down we stayed right pretty close to the thing. okay yeah we were uh close to where we launched okay yeah so, so then with, didn't with go two far. fish then then what are you guys thinking you thinking like okay you got close to 10 pounds and 10 pounds your mark like okay are you going to deviate and try to just go for bigger ones now or are you still thinking like fill out the limit fill the limit yeah, i was fill gonna say limit. yeah we're both i mean if, if you know whatever it takes we got to pick up a finesse stick you know whatever which eventually that, we that ended happened. up doing it yeah um i think you got one more uh blow actually we he threw perfect parallel down this dock line you know back it was kind of like overhanging brush on a on a dock and the slip was here but you know there was just like a yeah. know, 10 foot area or so and he pitched that spook back in there and, and it come up missed it and come up again which usually you don't necessarily see and man, man he couldn't get it to commit and we're like all right crap so i threw a couple of chaser baits back in there and nothing happened and it's like uh, it's kind of mm. because i mean you know it's i mean usually it's gonna be a pretty decent mm-hmm. fish to boil mm-hmm. up on a you know big yeah. spook like that mm-hmm. and so kind of deflated but not you're like all right we'll catch some fish mm-hmm. you know how long did you hold with that idea of like i'm gonna throw the spook before you give it up because i feel like that's so hard if you catch two nice ones on it's like when do you like just set that down and, and deviate it was about an hour of about an hour nothing yeah, okay. yeah we're like, all right we need to time to change yeah we're mm-hmm. getting too hooked that's on this so we have two fish oh, that that's are tough quality we right. can't let this go to waste right mm-hmm. so then we pick up i like throwing an eco rig yeah. everyone knows that uh so i caught one under a dock mm-hmm. i think he went almost two or over two he was right probably about two pounds uh so you know now we got three in the well you know that puts us probably right over right over 10 pounds right at right over somewhere mm-hmm. in there okay uh, and we jumped to the other side i think and uh, we're working some lay down wood um very similar to where i had that um once you kind of follow that and check out that frog mm-hmm. uh i threw a finesse worm in there as well and um i think plucked one out of there that was pretty small or, or no got off of the boat got off of the yeah boat. so i'm like all right really this is how this day is gonna go you know like <laughs> having pegged and everything and i guess just played with him a little too much of the boat and he mm. you know and he got off and i'm like all right yeah so then you kind of look at each other and it's like oh, yeah we we should be able to catch fish we still got some time left mm. but man <laughs> like anytime a fish gets off and you don't have it's one thing if you have five in the well, you right? Know? But at that point, we only had three. Fish and it's like in the twelve box. o'clock. Yes. Yeah, and I think we fished till two or th- three that day. Mm-hmm. Three that yeah, day. Yeah, I think I think that's what it was. So we a little stressed. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then, pretty sure we got up and ran. Yeah, yeah, we got to up the, and ran. the yep. upper, the one closest to the marina, okay. back in that creek. Okay, and ran back in there. And so that was actually, you know, where everybody kind of passed. So, like, we started making our run. We knew we were going where he had mapped out for the most part this second. So, like, if you come out of, I think it was Oak Grove, if you come out of Oak Grove, you have a big creek arm that's, like, your first, you know, you're pretty much your first right. I mean, it's mm-hmm. five minutes, and then there's a second one. We went to the second one. Mm-hmm. Well, everybody else was going to that first one. Mm-hmm. I mean, you probably watched okay. five or six boats go in that, yeah. on that first I do want to give a shout-out. The guys that won it day one, who were they? Um in the z7 or z8 Bob, was it bobby and uh yes bobby and brian they so we were back there fishing they actually came back there seen that we were back there fishing, oh, yeah. and turned around and left yeah i respect that yeah. They, yeah, they really pull respected up on that us. yeah they weren't mad or anything yeah, yeah. i really that's respect cool. that yeah they saw they saw us in there and uh, yeah. and we try to provide the same that's good and it was yeah. a big yeah. body i mean they could yeah. easily pull it in there and fished on the other yeah. side or i was whatever, gonna say but... saying that the code we were in we, we saw a lot of boat traffic I, don't, I shouldn't say a lot but what was interesting is as many times we were around it kept like and i know there was a five and a half pounder caught out of that same code mm-hmm. and they kept coming back so we had a lot of but i say a lot it wasn't a lot but 
Like, and I understand what you're saying, but what I've learned too is how many times, like, just like I was saying on a smallmouth, like I'd already fished it. We fished it twice, and it wasn't until the third mm-hmm. time that it finally, you know, had success. Yeah. We're watching, you know, other the number of boats go in, and you can still, like, at one o'clock, still catch fish after eight boats have already been in there, maybe. You know? Yeah. And we learned that in the Ricky Falk interview, and, and like so many times that people we've interviewed, where it's like it's a timing deal. And if you're in the place with fish, right. like, it's about just waiting them out until mm-hmm. they turn on mm-hmm. versus leaving. And that's mm-hmm. a weird balancing act of when do you leave and when mm-hmm. do you just like you keep grinding mm-hmm. through that area. But to your point, Jess, you know, that's a good, I mean, that's good sportsmanship to mm-hmm. 100%. Leave, leave an area. Like, yeah. you see somebody in there and they're working that area, that's their area, just kind of leave it, leave it alone. Yeah, like so that. much yeah. respect. Yeah, for that's that. cool. Yeah, that's good. If you want to come back to, you know, which is a lot of times, I mean, sometimes we see a boat, you know, mm-hmm. in an area that we had pretty scoped out or, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. pretty familiar catching fish there, you know, dip out and then come back in. Because like, right. like you said, you know, or yeah. the timing is a big thing. Mm-hmm. I mean, just because three or four boats came through there doesn't, doesn't mean you mean can't go back and pull yeah. one out or, or you yeah. know. Um, so, uh, but yeah, we, we ended up running up to that, that upper creek arm, so back towards the, towards the uh, ramp. And we got in there and just three, caught two more. I would say just caught two more. So he caught on. Um, he caught one more, I think, on a finesse rig, mm-hmm. and then um, and I call. That's when that's man. when the crankbait bite. That's yeah. so we found this land uh, lay down uh, wood. Uh, so I, you growing up on you know kind of kayaking the river and stuff. I love lay downs and you know overhanging brush. And mm. so we saw this bank with kind of like I don't know isolated chunk rock, mm-hmm. and then there was like one just perfect like lay down I don't know. Hmm. it was about six eight inches in diameter it was just kind of coming down like this and i threw you know like a like say kind of like a mid diving square bill mm-hmm. in there and just kind of cranked it down that and it was weird it just like got kind of heavy and then it like it was running to the boat and so like i'm trying to catch up to this fish <laughs> and i like man i thought it was huge because he's coming straight to yeah. me i can't catch up to him and i'm like oh good one good one <laughs> well next thing you know like i'm reeled down almost to the crankbait at the trolling motor and he's like he's like let out some line and because i couldn't see the fish i didn't know what i had he had a real clean up to the front it's, it's yeah right. i mean because i mean he was coming at me like a freight train so i'm thinking this is a tank you know i'm like here we go and and so we saw it and we got it in the net and, and that was a that was about two pounder mm-hmm. um solid and, one though solid yeah, one. yeah, yeah. exactly uh we definitely got your juices going yeah, yeah. but well, especially when it comes down to ounces too because you find when you go back and look at results and you're like oh yeah. my god we were only like three ounces shy of you know next place or, yeah where yeah. we were three ounces ahead of this one like every every ounce counts yeah. right in tournaments and, and this fish i mean when they run at you like that it's just that again that just makes you so excited mm-hmm. it's just sometimes you don't know what's on the other yeah. end of that thing and they all react differently i want to say too like listeners obviously everybody's at different levels and you got some guys out there and it's just like when they come in here there's really good sticks that come in here and you know they know it and they know what works and then there's we're all at different levels but for those listening to these guys i noticed real quick too what they they're talking about electronics but the other thing they're doing a good job of that i see or hearing is they're throwing to a spot they're mm-hmm. they're no you're with your eyes they're noticing a rock they're noticing bait fish you know run an observation on yeah. the water lay downs mm-hmm. uh dot you know just everything that you know you've done your research but you're also when you get on the water you're very observant and you're picking out you're throwing to a spot mm-hmm. pinpoint accuracy casting and you're catching fish because you're you're throwing to a spot where fish probably are going to be and that's where staying. day two yeah. that's where day okay. two yeah. really got dialed in yeah. um so kind of back to the whole pre-fishing thing you know i mean we're you know we're weekend anglers you know we, yeah. we don't i mean uh, you know, we are to a point now to where, you know, we can start going out in the evenings and stuff, mm-hmm. you know, every once in a while, especially now as we approach the mm-hmm. summer, but a lot of our fishing is done on the weekends. Mm-hmm. So, you know, you're picking up some different rods and whatever, mm-hmm. you know, you're trying to get dialed in. And it seems like for us on those two day tournaments, like it almost takes you half a day, sometimes right. at the end of the day before you really feel lasered in. Mm-hmm. Right. And so, um, that, that kind of makes it tough, mm-hmm. but, um, we, we just work with what, what mm-hmm. we have try to make the best of it be as confident in it as possible Mm -hmm. and uh and so yeah i mean that really that kind of sealed the deal for us on saturday we didn't have anything else like monumental but i mean that gave us our five um we felt it was a respectable Mm -hmm. bag you know like hey you know we'll get some good points out of this Mm -hmm. and some confidence into tomorrow Mm -hmm. and uh you know just see what happens um what'd you end up with 12 12 4 1 i think 12, 12 11 12 11 12 11 yeah something 11. like that yeah. yeah and we had um is that what we had or 
Yeah. Yeah, 12 11. Yeah, I think like 12 4, 12 5. Was sure, one. And that was uh, yeah, second place, right? Second yeah. place, yeah, on Saturday. Or, yep. I don't remember what we had. I think we were fourth. We were we were third and a fourth, so I don't remember which day. So it was between fourth. nine and twelve. Yeah, there was a couple elevens, I think, which we were like, we saw these bags coming up, and we're like, oh, yeah, man, it's going to be up. packed. Yeah, I think you all had. We 11. had twelve. We had eleven day one. I think twelve day two. Okay. I think okay. we were yeah. fourth and third. And so I think yeah, Bobby won day one. You guys were second because mm-hmm. yeah, we were yeah, half so. a pound out. Yeah. Yeah, we're yeah. half. Yeah. Yeah, which is great. And then I think what? How many boat field do we have? I think that. 24? Uh, 24, like, right. yeah. 26, 24, 24 26, 26, something yeah. like that. Which, I mean, is a solid turnout for that yeah. for that long of a hike. I know that long of a hike, gas prices, yeah. and just, yeah. yeah, overnight stay and all that stuff. And, uh, mm-hmm. yeah, I mean, there was, we were what, up Damn, or? you were close. 12, 10, okay, you guys had 12, 10. 12, 10. There we go. Yeah, yeah. you had 11, 11, 6, 11, 60. Sorry, yeah. 11, 60. Yeah. So those top five yeah. spots or so were really tight. Yeah. leader had, uh, yeah, 12, 5, 1, Stefano, oh, Woods, and Henry. So, wow. Bobby and... That's real tight. Yeah. That's not so for Smith Mountain Lake. I just... that those way, It just seems like all the weights that you're low. Now, they did have a tournament going out of Parkway, um, and I did hear those. I'm not going to be able to remember them, but... Because uh, I know Travis fished in that, and I think mm-hmm. he had like 16 pounds, and he finished... He might have been top 10, I think. Wow. Really? Don't misquote <laughs> me on that, but I think, you know... So, that's always interesting, too, you know, to see what... Yeah. That's you know, crazy. and for us... And just like you guys said, and a lot of guys are like this, not a lot of people have traveled and fished Smith Mountain. Mm-hmm. If they have, it's not been on a regular basis because to your point, we're all working. You know, you got families, lives, yeah. or whatever, and it's not like you can just pick up and go down there yeah. like you yeah. can Lake Frederick or, you know, Shandoah. So, and that's what's so cool about the club, though, is because mm-hmm. you get a bunch of people that are the same way. Yes, Versus you're on the same you, playing field. If you hop yeah. into a BFL or an Elite 70, like, Correct. that's a different that's a different breed of cat. Correct. Um, and I think that's what's so nice about having this club like this is mm-hmm. you get to compete against your peers, people mm-hmm. that are kind of in your bracket. It's not like a, a double A or going up against a major leaguer, mm-hmm. so to speak. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, which is which is really 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 cool. And I wonder then if you pre fish a tournament, do you change your expectations? So like, okay, well, if Bass was here a chick, they're gonna catch twenty five pounds, mm-hmm. but I don't think I have to right. do well in this tournament. Well, what can you win in this tournament? Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. That, that's what they always say. What's gonna win it? So when you guys, so it's over now, you guys talked about dialed in. So after what you see day one and what you put out there, uh, going into day two, what are you, what are you, are you retying stuff on, going the same stuff? What are you, what's going through your mindset before you? That's one thing we don't do and we should is retie stuff. <laughs> it hasn't bit us yet. Not really. it, I'm sure it will. So you're basically just staying with what what worked day one. You're going to start yep, with that and we're see gonna what We're going to start happens. with that. And yeah. We're like, so. we need to have all five fish by 10 o'clock because it's yep. supposed to be hot. It's going to yep, be sunny. That's right. It's going to be brutal. Weather so, pattern change. Yeah, the goal was by 10 o'clock, let's have I fish and then we that, hit we get a fog delay yep. day two mm-hmm. like it's foggy and, a half. And, yeah. and it was a good call i'm glad they did like it it was really foggy yeah hour and a half yeah, yeah. so yeah. like we're on the water on sunday and wow. it's we're not launching we're just sitting sitting waiting yeah, for the fog to lift. Bull, you know just like yeah. spinning in circles yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know are they gonna still have you guys come in at the same time or they, well, they did it push back? it back okay. and, yeah. yeah i think they gave us the same amount 7 30 to 2 30 yeah, yeah. Okay, okay cool so but what was your game plan then so we kind of got <laughs> bummed. <laughs> we're like, yeah. this is probably not going to work for us <laughs> now. We're going to try it. We're not going to switch yeah. it up because that's what we we were catching fish till, I don't know, 11 o'clock on 10, mm-hmm. 11 o'clock on top water. Top water, water yeah. So we're like, well, we're just going to do it. So we went back to the same exact spot. Mm. But even when we launched and went down, like, did you all go down, like, Jared? Very. Sh- we went basically the same spot because right around the corner. it it was still foggy down there. Yeah, that's what I heard. I think f- you guys told me you guys actually pulled up and just kind of. Yeah, we had to I- go back yeah, to idle. I, I, could, I came off plane because yeah. I mean it was just like we're. I mean it's we couldn't here. see to the yeah. wall. I mean, it was crazy. That's the first time I've ever. Yeah, and I told Brian that too because we're talking about fog, and I've been with the youth before where it. To your point, yes, you're exactly right. Where or we've had it, yeah, it's lifted, lifted, and it's like you're running. All of a sudden, you hit fog again, and like I've not, I've shut it down and not crossed big creeks because of you know just fear what's coming out. You know, you right. yeah. can't. You, you can have your nav s- lights on, but when you can't see, you know, you can't mm-hmm. see what's out or what's coming. That's it's, it's not dangerous. safe. Yeah, well, and I've never said, you know, oh, that's what the electronics are for. I'm sorry, I'm not relying on a piece of electronics to tell me. Mm-hmm. You know, Let me say real quick too. On. I saw. I don't know if anybody watched the last. Uh, the Bassmaster Elite, and I forget where they were at, but they Fork? had, yes, yeah, so they had, but they did an interview with a guy that was in a wheelchair. I don't know if anybody saw that. And they said he was an experienced angler. He and the boater were both very experienced anglers and 
very used to running boats and fishing tournaments and competitive fishing and similar type thing where they were running and they were in fog and they were relying on electronics and what they didn't realize they came up on the dam and they hit the dam oh my goodness he was thrown out and he was lucky to live like he had broken ribs and bones. So you got thrown over and, the dam? You no, know, he got thrown up into the dam. And oh, they had, okay. They had pictures of the boat up and just destroyed the boat. And so, like he said, he was literally lucky to be alive. And his message was just that. His message was, look, I don't care how good you are, how much experience you have. Like, yes, and those electronics will show you a route, but you just, other boaters, like debris, like just yeah. uh, docks, you know, things, it's just doesn't show that's those. best what you guys did was good because mm. you can't take that risk and chance mm-hmm. um it's not worth it so yeah. Nope. Yeah. so you guys then idle down do you keep you keep moving you just idle mm-hmm. down you get as far as you're wanting to go yep we got okay. to our point yeah we found our spot i mean we got yeah. to our spot but i mean it was still i mean you couldn't really see anything within probably 50 yards of you which actually um, got our excitement back up yeah <laughs> exactly yeah so <laughs> uh, so what happened yeah and then so i mean he same thing he picked up the spook um you know and at this point i tied on kind of like you were talking about with the plopper i had it was a little bit mm-hmm. smaller size though so mm-hmm. um you know we kind of you know, he was starting a bigger spook so i threw a little bit smaller plopper you know and uh just trying to figure out kind of what they wanted uh, clearly they were smacking that yesterday but you know plopper makes a little bit different kind of bubble trail yeah, different yeah, yeah. different action and um so, I mean, we fished that first point, kind of peninsula he was talking about from yesterday, and really nothing. And we're like, mm, okay, well, let's, <laughs> you know, let's keep going. So we go down to this next little pocket within the same, you know, same creek arm. And um, we found uh, just these docks are just set up perfect, right? Like, they're all, like, linear, just, like, going straight, you know, just, like, one, two, three. The water was glass. Yeah, it was glass. And, uh, and so we're like, okay. And, um, and so it, had you... Had you caught one? No, yeah, I don't think no, we caught. You it. had the two blow. Yeah, so I threw this plopper down this dock all the way to the bank, and I start pulling it out, and it gets to about I don't know, like the third or fourth pier off this dock, Ooh. and just I I don't like to speculate on fish size, but we saw the whole back dorsal fin and everything just boil on this thing, and he missed it, mm. and I'm like, you know, so like I stop it, kind of jerk it a couple times, <laughs> just doing anything, you know, and then I pick up my retrieve my cadence again, and and nothing, and mm. I'm like man that one would have been sweet you know yeah. and uh we we kind of farted around on that dock a little bit more but we're like you know he's probably cruising or mm-hmm. actively feeding you know so we didn't want to get hung up on it it was still early okay. mm-hmm. you know we weren't gonna spend the next half hour on that dock mm-hmm. so we keep on going down same thing we find very similar to that first fish he caught on Saturday. I find this little pocket with a shade line hitting it at the very back of a dock. And I make a bomb cast and land it just perfectly. And no sooner, not, I mean, before I almost got the bail clicked over, you know, I get that um, plopper out and smack it again and missed it. Mm. And so I thought, I was like, okay, maybe it was, I didn't think it was big, you know, maybe I don't know, mm-hmm. one, two pounder. I'm like, okay, there's fish, there's fish mm-hmm. here. And so that was kind of confidence inspiring for us, but <laughs> we still don't have any fish in the boat. We're like, well, what are we going to do? And um, so we worked out of that, went down around the next bend, and that's kind of when it started. To, <laughs> that, that's when the juice started to yep. happen. I'll let him kind of jump into that. There was a little overhanging limb. We get in the back of that little pocket. There was one little dock back in there, but the bank was really steep. So, I, you know, you know, it drops off. There was this little overhanging limb or whatever in the water by itself made another perfect cast on it and the back hook just barely got hooked on that limb and then it fell down in the water that's my absolute favorite way (laughs) you know what i mean because it's natural accidental perfection light landing is not it falls in the water i actually walked that one out four or five times this that was that four and three quarter jumped yeah. clean over it so i actually looked back at him i was in the front of the boat he's like, like oh, devastated man. And, and he he's yells. looking at me, and I'm watching his bait. He's like, yeah, I'm hey. I'm turned around, not even looking. And at I'm him. like, dude, set the hook. <laughs> he came back again, and his bait's gone. And I'm like, look at the fish, set the hook. <laughs> so I set the hook, looking back at him, and there he was. Only. Yeah, he just like oh. reaction sets. Like he's like listening to me, staring at me. The fish is here doing its business with his spook in his mouth, <laughs> and. That thing jumped, and I'm like, "Oh dear God!" <laughs> like, stay on, you know. I mean, oh, just. Oh my gosh! It, 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 it and that's just, funny how that, that that's man. fishing sometimes too. Because always, 
sometimes the biggest fish are like you, you want to be able to tell a story and be like man like you're saying everything was perfect yep. yeah. but it's like sometimes it's you're catching accident. like when ray caught the big you know six pounder like he's eating a peanut butter and jelly <laughs> and he's like i'm hung up you know and <laughs> Ray's like, no you're not you know, and it's a big you know so it's like you want it to be perfect but sometimes it's like the unorthodox things that are like, i guess me pausing it, pause it. it. Yes. Yeah. yeah yes he went back he went back it. yeah i mean his yeah. his his sails were deflated <laughs> that he just missed his behemoth i mean i shouldn't say behemoth but i mean that's hey and i'm surprised you got it out because i know there's times too i'm like like if i see a bass come up and i had one of those two come up on a big swim bait and i'm like and i saw the smallmouth come up and eat it and i'm like <laughs> and I couldn't get it out. Like it's, I'm surprised you were able to say something. Like, yeah, yeah like, I, like he's looking at me, and I'm, I don't know what it was. I just, I was lasered in on that, mm -hmm. on that, on that spook, and I saw that thing just go under the water. Looked like a bobber going under the water. It was like just suctioned it down. Mm -hmm. and I'm, I'm like, fine. set the hook. <laughs> I'm still. So you, ne you never. This is the first time this you've is thrown the a spook. First time I, I love that's this. Crazy, I love dude. It. Like I said, I, I, I don't it. know where I seen it or heard it from. It is a spook. great bait. It's yeah, a great it's walking bait. I'm hooked, of course, but it only had one hook in it. Yeah. So we were kind of freaking out because it bounced off the front of the net and yeah. dove under. Oh, and we're gosh. freaking out. Yeah. And then we it wasn't to... choked the way that the mm -hmm. ones were. Now, granted, he came back the second time. It's hard to say if he would have got it the first time. But it was, yeah, I mean, it was, you know, bottom of the mouth, uh, one treble. Yeah. Like, and, and people that don't fish competitively, like, it's one thing to lose a fish. Anytime mm -hmm. you lose a fish. But when you're when going for pounds line. and yeah. money on the line and, and you places can see it. and you can see it, that period of time from the time it's hooked, it's coming back to the boat. Because last time we were down at Smith, I had a plopper bite. We'd gone up on down by the dam, and we'd gone up, and I was hung up. And I went down, and I saw a big large down there. I was like, oh, man. So we fished for it. That was the first day one. Went back to it first thing day two. I threw the plopper out there and just blew up on it, right? Four or five pounds. Mm -hmm. And then, like, comes out of the water and just – and it went back under. It didn't come unbuttoned mm -hmm. out of the water. And then it, all of a sudden, just somehow it came unbuttoned. Mm -hmm. I don't know. But that period of time yeah. is so – like, almost like your heart stops. And yep. you're yeah. just like – Sometimes the net man is the is the worst. Oh like yeah, you, you're catching it like it's more pressure on the net man because it's kind of yeah, like, like a field goal kicker you can't right be there. missing this. Like yeah. say, when you miss it and it goes back under, yeah. you're just like, oh my god, yeah, I like, hate yeah, that. Like, <laughs> yeah, I mean, we, I don't know. I guess yeah, we, we when you're the net designated net guy, I mean, you know, it's <laughs> like you know, I mean, hey. He, I mean, we they both, gave out an award one year for that. Yeah, well, they man. should. Hey, they yeah. should. It, this <laughs> would be. Awesome. Now, I mean, we we both catch him, but man, when he yeah. gets on a roll, I tell That's you, cool. it's it's. I mean, it's not that I have watch. a ton of experience, no, it's fun but to watch, isn't it? Like, well, it's, and and I think the way we respond to each other, oh, you know, absolutely. like mm -hmm. you know, because I mean, I've got on a couple of streaks, in yep. which we'll kind of get to talking about. You know, it happened that way on Sunday, okay. but we're rooting each other on. Yeah, we're not like, yeah, like man, yeah. what's he doing? It's like fist bump. Yeah, I mean, we rotate around the boat. Yeah. yeah if you cool. if you watch this if you put a gopro or something in, in the boat you'd probably think like what are these guys doing like there's not a designated you know guy on the trolling motor and a guy in the back yeah. i mean it's just a circus <laughs> yeah it is. yeah i mean an organized circus yeah. i guess yeah. you could say um but no we got that one in the boat and we're like okay this well, like know, we kind of got the kicker how much was that one that one that one was four seven four yeah wow, so nice. that was big fish for it ended up being nice. a big fish but actually prior to that you caught one again that was smaller than the yeah. spook we had him in the box because yeah. i don't think they had a i think no, no, two, two under 12 yeah. or 214 i think yeah. it was hmm. um so we had <laughs> and we're like all right as long as we get pip squeak out of the box <laughs> you know we're good but we're both so jacked on this one. Oh, yeah and um and so I think it was the next pocket. Yep. We're just kind of working these pockets down this thing. The sun's creek. coming up and yep. the shade's going back. Yeah. So yep. All that fog lifted. Sun's sun getting It's high. getting hot. Yeah. And uh, we're like, you know, okay, all the bites we've had have been <clears throat> top water overcast or, you know, in those shade overhanging pockets mm -hmm. or, or what have you. And so we were chasing shade lines and we did this for the next two hours and hmm. it, it worked very yeah, well. Interesting. I like um, it. Yeah. We, so we got into this next pocket and uh, again kind of similar i see a little uh kind of like chunk rock outcropping there's a dock here mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. probably 20 yards and then this rock little rocky point if you will mm -hmm. and, a, and a lay down coming right off of it and i pitched that square bill in there and, and it was like the third crank it mm -hmm. i felt it just hit the bottom and there he is you know and that was i don't know that's three and a half well no yeah, that, that was that, a big one the first one was a little bit smaller i think that kind of got it okay so, yeah it was that's about what a got you hooked on the crankbait that's exactly okay. because he's throwing top water i'm throwing that crankbait i had a couple you know small fish the day mm. before around docks and i'm like 
He's like, no, oh, keep throwing it, yeah. you know, because I'm like, uh, we haven't yeah. really figured out a pattern mm-hmm. in a sense. I mean, it may sound like it with top water, but mm-hmm. you can live or die by a top water yeah. you know. Right. Catch and a so, couple and then, yeah. Exactly. So it's like, do you throw a chatterbait? Do you throw a jig? Do you throw mm-hmm. a finesse worm? You know, I was like, no, I'm going to throw that square bill, mm-hmm. you know. And and when that one hit, now I got confidence. We got yeah. him in the boat. And uh, then – you again it, well, yeah th- so we work around this next pocket and another dock comes off again perfect case scenario the sun's hitting the back of this thing and there's a shade shade spot i mean no bigger around than a pie plate or so wow. and i pitched that square bill in just right off the back corner of that dock again second crank and just hammered it and that was a three three and a yeah, half pounder three, three so they're not under the docks no. you're off the dock you're looking at shape just and that's cool shape. too because yeah. some guys will go in and, and not that this is wrong because sometimes you'll find them directly under the dock but and not saying they, there's not some under there All right but to your point like sometimes and you think when the sun's up you're strictly under docks but you're finding them in that shade that's good good tip mm-hmm. yeah and shade with some type of <clears throat> structure in real world the wow. only thing that really made me kind of think about that was because, you know, on Saturday I caught some small ones, but mm-hmm. chasing them or running mm-hmm. it parallel to docks, you know, mm-hmm. and I'm like, what are they doing? Almost like they were kind of like mm-hmm. suspended, you know. We had the same bite. We had kind of the backside, backside of a dock in the shade. Like it wasn't okay. necessarily under the dock. Now we caught some under docks. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But yeah. But the shade was just, a key. The shade was a key. key yeah. Mm-hmm. So, so I netted that one, got it in. Yeah. And as he was pulling the hooks out of that one. We were kind of right there on the point, yep. and there was uh, the rocks or whatever. Yeah, so I paralleled wall. that point or whatever, and it was four foot of shade. Spook top water. This is at nine o'clock, nine thirty. The sun's high. I mean, it's bluebird yeah. skies at yeah. this point. I'm wow. walking that thing down really? through there, and another top water smacked it. That's awesome. And that one was two, two and a half. Yeah. So that's we have that is. that's great. We yeah. have four for. Yeah, we had four fish for. I mean, I'd say twelve pounds. I'd say it was probably eleven-ish pounds yeah. or so. Um, and so at this point, you got the whole day ahead of you. Are you going to continue? Are you thinking like, are we going to continue with the same game plan? Are we going to deviate from it just to like maybe throw some finesse stuff, just get the fifth one, and then we like, what what is your game plan going in here when you just need one more? We were going to follow that shade line until it was all the way back to the okay. land. Yeah, we, yeah, we, we were going <laughs> to fish shade until there was no more shade. Okay. I mean, with the same, I mean, running gun with, we weren't going to get hung up, fixated on one spot. We're like, so kind of the same area, but we pushed deeper on Sunday because, you know, kind of back to your original question, how much area were we mm-hmm. fishing? You know, I mean, we had a spot per se enough to fish two days, but mm-hmm. it was kind of like pushing everything mm-hmm. that you had. Mm-hmm. So we just had to keep, keep going we're like well this is working Mm -hmm. and uh and we still had shade so we were just chasing that and uh i think i caught the last one you know the two pounder two and a half pounder something like that on the crankbait Hmm. and uh and he's like man you just keep throwing it you know and and i'm your net guy yeah yeah kind of roll like (laughs) you said kind of roll reversal you know Mm -hmm. and so i i mean i I was really happy with that just for Mm -hmm. the the discipline to uh, you know stick with not necessarily what we knew but what Mm -hmm. we felt we've kind of found some comfort in found mm-hmm. some confidence in we said you know because i'd say our game really is finesse fishing with you know a senko of some sort oh, yeah. you know but we were kind of power finesse fishing mm-hmm. if that makes sense you know and we just that's what we went with that, we, that's awesome pattern too, yeah. that is good and that's kind of brian and i we were the same way like i had i think four the first day and he had four the second day and he was nico same thing you're talking about yeah and when and it's funny because when you get on that, like you can, you're wearing them out. And oh, like yeah. you say, and those roll, like it's you're saying, roles change. Mm-hmm. Um, he was asking me earlier too. Well, what you know, front, back, whatever, both front. And I'm, we're the same way. Like I mean, he's predominantly on the front. I'll go to the back, but if he's tying on. I jump on the front. Yep. Like it's mm-hmm. there's no rhyme or reason. We don't even have a necessary game plan. <laughs> it's it's we have a game plan, but it's not like mm-hmm. it's you know set in stone or whatever. It's just right. gonna roll with whatever's working. And and to your point sometimes throwing off baits just to see what is working and when the hot hand is there keep yep. throwing it but but to your point being disciplined too to keep throwing what you're throwing what's worked for you yeah and it goes to show like i've always thought this it's not going to be one bait it's going to be it could be two or three different baits at different times different bites different areas i mean it's all like you said when you talk to different people yeah it's so cool and you see what you know success can come in different ways right what i'm trying to say so. well it's fun i think when you know i I'd say day two was way more of a pattern than day one mm. was. I mean, yeah, he, there was mm-hmm. topwater bites, good fish, that type of thing. But it was still like if somebody asked, like, oh, you know, did you, did you pattern them all day long? Like, right. Well, I had a topwater bite for about three hours. But other than that, I mean, right. I, couldn't, I couldn't tell you, you know. Right. But day two, it was trusting that 
they're here. Mm-hmm. What we're doing is going to work, and it's going to get us, you know. Again, we didn't think we had sealed anything. Right. We're, we're yeah. fishing for one more big bite because right. we're like, it's – it, we're like it, it's gonna take something stupid. Did the crankbait work day one? I forgot. What, I know you threw a little bit. Or, you got but one with the crankbait. Right? Day I, one. Yeah, we have we weighed one that was okay. on the crankbait, and I I caught probably four or five okay. little ones gotcha. uh, that that you know got called out. Right. Or never made it into. <laughs> that's not. That's another cool thing I think is because sometimes you can totally throw that thing out. Like after day one, if you didn't have success on, you don't have confidence in it. Well, I'm not going to go to that day too. Right, right. But sometimes that day, that second day, sometimes it just you just never changes know. by hour. Yeah, it does yeah. <laughs> changes by hour. What a great. Yep. That's a great changes by our, like a did you guys ever think about uh soaking something deep or working the deeper parts of the points or what was your vibe with that so that was our game plan we got our fifth mm-hmm. fish we're like you're still always looking for a bigger one we knew we had yeah. roughly we were guessing 13 pounds yeah. we didn't think we had 14 or whatever yeah so we were like let's go hit these secondary points let's crank them or something maybe yeah. they've started to push out because the water temperature was like 70 yeah mm-hmm. I, is that I, what? I had between 68 and 70 and i think some of the other guys like jason and Justin, they, like they were six. saying 71 72 yeah so mm-hmm. we're like maybe some are starting to push out mm-hmm. let's try it mm-hmm. but we nothing well and then the other thing with that too is so sunday it got really you know it yeah, got, it got hot, hot. And yeah. like we were i mean i guess i wasn't really prepared like you know i was planning to be in I was saying overalls well, and yeah. stuff, you know, the, the bibs, because I was thinking it was going to be rainstorms mm-hmm. and, you know, whatever. Mm-hmm. We just didn't want to get wet. Well, now it's 85 degrees, humid, sun's baking, you know. More boat traffic. Yeah, so that boat yeah, traffic did get busy. Up. Uh-huh. We made one run, boy, it got busy. Yeah. yeah. So we, we graphed this point, and we were going <laughs> to see if we could find any isolated, like, you know, rock piles or something. And it just – you're just getting beat around out there. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, without spot lock or something, you know, it's, it's kind of hard to – feel comfortable posting up on an area like that and mm-hmm. fishing it the way it needs to be fished so mm-hmm. yeah i mean so we've really we just kind of i mean we found some more main lake kind of coves if you mm-hmm. will um you know that were the only little bit of shade left on the mm-hmm. lakes you know there's a lot of big homes down there with like their own coves mm-hmm. and so it was deeper water when i say deeper I mean, it was 10 to 12 feet wow. we weren't fishing 25 30 feet mm-hmm. you know, just we didn't want to be out there. We didn't feel comfortable out there. So, mm-hmm. did you go rerun new like new water after that point, or just the same stuff? Then where where you we actually at? hopped across? Hopped yeah, across. we we hopped across and fished a different creek arm, uh, almost parallel across the lake from the boat ramp. Mm-hmm. Uh, got beat to death trying to get over there. You know, crossing mm-hmm. all different lines of boat traffic, um, and we pull up on this point. It's getting kayaked in uh, pontoons. And I caught one on a crankbait off the point. I mean, within like five minutes. I mean, it wasn't it wasn't really anything significant. I mean, we had our, our mm-hmm. five that we ended up weighing at that point. We didn't add anything else to it. Mm-hmm. But we're still that was probably ten, fifteen feet of water. And uh, but we're still like, man, just one more big yeah, bite. Yeah, just one, one more, more and we'll be more confident. Right, yeah. right, right. Yeah. So. Um, that, and that's the way you got to be day. thinking. Yep. Yeah. 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 That's a really. Did good you day. catch any more or no? After that, little or ones any, off of Nico. Yeah. That was, and, yeah. That was, and then there was that big thunderstorm. So we actually went in like a half an hour early because they're like, we don't really want to get caught in this. Luckily, right. it didn't rain yeah. on us, but it was rolling up towards us. Right. So yeah. we're like, look, we got our fish. We're happy with it. We, okay. it, whatever we end up with, we end up with. That's it. cool. Yeah. So what was, and then your day, you actually finished in a, in a top four, top five. So, like, how did you guys, what was your sequence of fish? Were they early or did they scatter through the day? Um, I think I had the first one. We went back to the same cove, and I, I like throwing a um, the um, it's it's a smaller kind of umbrella rig, a live target. It's probably oh, a yeah. little spinner. Okay. And I same thing you're talking about. Went in behind in a shady area and behind a dock, and had like a three, two and a half. Well, it was a three pounder, I guess. And then uh, I don't think we we didn't have the top water bite that we had before. And then like I say Brian, he started working. Um, that Nico rig and really, really, you know, doing well with that. Shade just, lines or tar- docks? Um, actually, ours was in between docks. We caught really? some yeah. in, up on the main in between, mm-hmm. like, like in between docks. Um, and, and we continue to work docks. Um, you, know, you like you're saying, you work a lot of different things. Mm-hmm. Um, and but those were kind of the two things that seemed to. to so it's just on. crazy because you guys both finished uh, in this tournament. You guys both finished in the top five. You guys finished. 
third, mm-hmm. but then you were doing totally different things, so to speak. Like yeah. you were keying in mostly just shade. It just had to do a shade. Yeah. Whereas you guys were in between docks. Yeah. And so again, that's what's so fascinating when you when you have mm-hmm. people on from the same tournament is you can skin the cat that's different right. ways <laughs> and have right. success. Yeah. It's not just like you have to hit a dock to yeah. be successful. And, and hats off to you guys for so you and you get up there and again it's funny because you, again you don't the cool thing about tournaments those don't do them you don't know you don't know if yeah. what you have is going to and you're yeah. watching and you people are weighing in randomly so like you weigh different people weighing in, so you're kind of trying to count weight you're watching weight and you're kind of like well, okay you know you know, might know your mm. top three or five and but you don't really know until they you know read it off and right yeah and i was excited who? for you guys because mm. i mean you got to be here's the thing too to we've talked about this off air but you, it's anybody can go out there and have a good day but yeah. to be at the be a one and a two i mean that's really good you mm. know sometimes you're like a one and then you know down and we've done that we whatever. yeah we've done that Last we've had our fair share don't get us wrong <laughs> i mean we we were very fortunate you know bless so us that have weekend one and, but one and two in the same you know one two that's that's really really great you know um what kind of base were you guys throwing i see you got an assortment there yeah you guys want to one each. <laughs> yeah yeah of course the spook <laughs> <laughs> and then i go to the sunday series we actually got a pretty crazy okay. story of the sunday series at lake yeah, anna yeah. with the old mega bass spinner bait hmm. okay so we did oh man when was that it was back it was like the middle of april i think uh beginning was, or was middle it right of april? before the chick or after the chick in the middle of the chick and no, i think Mountain. it was i think it was before the chick before the it was chick. like mid-april i believe uh, yeah that, <laughs> you get excited just thinking about it so Man, what a we go event. there and it, it wasn't too hateful there and I, I forget how many boats there were i think it was 20 something yeah it was the last seven to three that so they switched over for the summer because the mm. boat traffic mm-hmm. the um six to 11 i think mm-hmm. so it was the last seven to three that they okay. got down there yeah so we we fished all morning nothing <laughs> within what was it around lunchtime i caught one on a crankbait over a log and then we run across, you do the same thing. And yeah. then the wind, you know how Anna gets yeah. mm-hmm. brutal wind. So we were almost thrown in the towel. <laughs> you know how that goes. Yeah. I mean, I'm sitting there and like, you know, I can tell he's sitting there grinding, just thinking, you know, and I'm kind of thinking like not too high, not too low. I'm like, you know, I've seen us go and catch eight to 10 pounds in a matter of an hour. And just, it's funny it how that stuff happens. Yeah. I mean, you know, docks are our strong suit, skipping docks and stuff. And so mm-hmm. we've done that, you know, so I wasn't like totally out of it, but I'm like, man, we got to make something happen. <laughs> mm-hmm. And so I was like, I'll tell you what, let's, let's, let's. He's, he's like, sit down. We're I was like, sit, I was like, yeah, I was like, sit down. We're running, you know, and, you know, as fast as we can. So we went down. Um, yeah, because we went because if you come up, I think it's like the Rose Alley Island or whatever, mm-hmm. right there in the middle of Anna, mm-hmm. okay, and you can yeah, run, yeah. you can run left or you mm-hmm. can go right. Uh, so we normally fish that left side pretty heavy. Um, so we come out of this last pocket that yeah you know, we wanted to try, and nothing happened. Come down, come around the island, go up that right side, and uh, we have a riprap wall up there. And going back to kind of my saltwater like fishing, you know, so. Um, you know, like watching jetty walls and stuff like that, you mm-hmm. know, those, you know, big predator fish get really aggressive pushing, they trap bait up against yeah, it. True. Right. Yeah, you know, yeah. and, and down, you know, you know how tides and stuff work mm-hmm. and, and the wind down on the beaches and such yeah. it gets really crazy. And so we just pull up on this riprap wall. The wind's howling. Howling. I mean, and the boat was facing forward and it was all like, you could do to just keep, keep it all yeah. yeah and Without. he and i can tell he didn't say anything but he's looking at me like are you crazy what, are yeah you like, what are we doing so i'm up on the trolling motor like just just kind of like 45ing honestly away from the bank just so i can kind of control it yeah and he ties on that half ounce mega bass spinner bait and with a Guggen yeah with a saucy swimmer or whatever, or whatever. Yeah. and man like three casts in boom three pounder yep wow i was like huh like i and i, I don't think i don't <laughs> like oh you know well, well, and he's kind of like huh and i don't even think that one like i got the net at the very last minute because i'm trying to control the trolling motor because yeah. the boat i mean the, i mean yeah. it's white capping on that anna i mean it was it was brutal and uh needless to say we get that one in the box and we're like okay and we had two we had two little ones on we're, we're two pound and a half two pounds yeah. i think I mean, we had like four pounds right okay, with yeah. those two and then now yeah. plus this so one. he catches this one we're like all right let's hmm. let's make something happen so we go another 20 yards up that bank maybe and i'm again like focused on <laughs> just keeping us you know off yeah. the bank and he pitches in there again and he's like jacob and i'm like what and i look back and that rod is like this <laughs> and i'm like oh 
okay, you know, it's it like it, normally I'm pretty good and pretty reactive to that mm. net, but I, it just I'm like, what do you mean? Like no we, way. Just, we no just caught way. a three pounder, yeah. like you know. And what was that one? Four it, nine three. Damn. Yeah, it, 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 was wow. a, it was a toad. As he was getting that one in the box, I pitched in there again. I haven't got there. Yes. Oh my god. Another one. <laughs> yeah, another four and a half or or whatever. Four, right? At four. You're right at four. Yeah, he was. I was like Jacob Net, and he's like, "What?" And I'm like, "Net." <laughs> yeah, I haven't got. I haven't You're got like, the. Come on, man. I, <laughs> like, give me the program. Yeah, I haven't got the five in the box, so I'm like, uh. you, like I'm literally trying to, you know, call tags and you know make sure the fish are good, yeah. get the lid. Show. And he's like, and I'm like, all right, he's screwing with me. You know, see, but no, when like I could just tell, like I can tell when he's kind of messing with me, you know. Yeah. If, but. He was in that thing. Yeah, we got that it one. Was another four pounder. So there you go, eleven pounds and, and Jake puts fifteen his cats. Away and just holds the net. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean he he was on a roll, and and I'll be the first. I mean, like I'm not. And someone's on a roll, yeah. I, I'm like I'm not gonna steal your thunder, man. You know, I mean it's like a it's like a pinch hitter in baseball. You know, somebody you know a hot bat, put him up to the plate, let him go. You but know, a spinner like, bait in the wind. I love spinner bait in the wind. But, you know. but to your point, you're the one that, that had that gut reaction, like, hey, we're going to try this out. Like, besides, like, okay, this is why I saw, and it, what, what stuck out to you about that place? Is it the only one in the area that looked like that? Like, where you had the waves hitting that wall? Is that why you decided to hit that one first? So we've caught fish there before on jerk baits. Okay. And, uh, so and, I, and, and I've caught some isolated fish on, like, shaky heads and stuff, because, like, there's a bridge abutment, and then, you okay. know, I mean, everybody, I mean, it's no mm-hmm. secret. Everybody knows there's riprap, there's bridges in Anna. I mean, it just depends mm-hmm. on where you want to run, you know? Um but i just saw i mean the way the water was just i mean it looked like it looked like jetty walls the way the water was yeah. just pounding that rock you know and it was stirred up and i was just like I mean, what do we have to lose we fish calmer mm-hmm. slack areas nothing's really panned out you know why wouldn't these fish be mm-hmm. here you know i mean it's like hey well, it's worth a shot and those features and what jake was talking about i've heard nolan minor talk about it you talk whether it's a trout whether you're trout yeah. salt water mm-hmm. like and they're fish eating eating to survive and so those features are can go across the country anywhere mm-hmm. from salt water to fresh water to like it's just learning learning those little concepts and and seeing that and applying that you know is it can help you have success yeah. Pay attention to details and, and things like that, yeah. Absolutely, and I think the, the big thing that helped us there, too, is, I mean, we didn't want to throw in the towel, but mm-hmm. we weren't really expecting, mm-hmm. you know, we weren't expecting something really good to happen. Mm-hmm. I had a gut feeling that it could, right? but we weren't expecting it to happen. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, I mean, he just, I mean, he The water was like 63 yeah. or 65 mm-hmm. degrees, so. Kind of perfect. Like, why aren't we right catching there? anything? I mean, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, right. And so, I mean. And he, sometimes it is a bite window, work. too. You, if you'd have been there 30 minutes earlier, you might not have gotten here, you know, 20 minutes later. Sometimes, I mean, you might, I think you hit it right at the right, always here, right place at the right yep. time. Yeah, right yep. place at the right time. You know, based on that feeding window, they're feeding up, and that's why, in, 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 I mean, you <laughs> and you do. Sometimes you catch them in flurries, and then you go an hour, two hours without anything. Yeah, because you know? we hit it three more times. We actually brought yep. the trolling motor up, or, well, batteries. Batteries, yeah. Motor. And then we were kind of, that was the mm-hmm. only five that we caught that day. We got mm-hmm. second with 13, 8, 9. There you go. 14. No. It was 14, yeah, 14, 8, 9. Uh, 14, 8, 9. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, 14, 8, 9. Yep. And, and it was just like we looked at each other when we got in the truck and we we're like that's just stupid yeah. <laughs> i mean we're i mean we're like that that doesn't happen yeah. i mean come on and you know yeah there's some sticks at anna yes yeah. that sunday oh yeah series, so. a lot of those locals too they mm-hmm. know they know the brush piles they know you just need one day though yeah, yeah. that's right you just need one day well that's what makes fishing yeah. so fun too like anybody can win on any given day yep and exactly so, and you got to go into it knowing thinking uh, I think KBD said it like if you don't think you can win, then why are you even showing up? You right. Know, like yeah. Why put your money in if you don't think you can? Well, it's crazy. I'm 100% confident in the bait I'm throwing, mm-hmm. but I'm zero percent confident <laughs> to catch anything. That's what <laughs> you can ask him. I go into them with no confidence because if we don't catch anything, then I'm not disappointed. But if we win, you're That's excited even more. That's one way to look it, at it's it. really funny because you know, I mean, we didn't really, I guess, discuss it a whole lot, but. Saturday night, he's like, okay, we finished at Smith. He's like, you know, we, we finished second. He's like, man, I don't know. Because, yeah, he caught top water, but like I said, we didn't have a solid locked in pattern. Mm-hmm. Like, to, it's like not enough to change anything, but mm-hmm. not enough to do anything different, you know, for Sunday. And so mm-hmm. his confidence was kind of like 50 50. I was like, this was our luck day. We won't catch a thing tomorrow. Yeah. Right, right. And it's literally what he said. And I'm like, oh, you know, I'm kind of even killed, you know, mm-hmm. but I was like, you yeah. know, and at the end of the day, he's like, 
of Sunday, he's like, you're pretty confident. And I was like, I, I mean, I just had a feeling something good mm-hmm. could happen, you know, and I'm not superstitious or anything, mm-hmm. but, mm-hmm. you know, I just, we put, we put the time mm-hmm. in, yeah. in the areas in which we can, you know, mm-hmm. like the research on the maps, you know, it may not be necessarily time on the water as much as we'd mm-hmm. like. Um, I think and, it helps. We don't have a big boat because we have oh, to yeah. key in on these no, areas. Like it, because i would be impatient and be like let's roll <laughs> yeah, he likes speed and wants to run you know so right. we no, just pick up our areas a lot of tournaments won mm-hmm. because of you know not having the big motor and you just troll up and down a bank i can't yep. there's been so many like that at all levels yeah. they're yeah. one because you can't run and, yep. and that's the thing i think that that really burns people when you start fishing in a big boat is you really try to fish the whole lake mm-hmm. and, and there's only like one percent of the anglers out there that can actually do that effectively and even you know and guys at home we've done these seminars too when my brother and i fish college members why we were so good is we didn't pre-fish by catching fish we just figured out an area that's right because yep. it, every time you see that area every day that goes mm-hmm. back especially in multi-day tournaments you figure something out about that area again mm-hmm. and that's what i'm thinking with you guys here is like you figured out the shade lines because you kept in kind of the same area mm-hmm. and you could see it differently mm-hmm. if you keep running brand new spots mm-hmm. you don't learn that pattern of behavior mm-hmm. And I think it's so hard when you are in a boat. It's like, well, if I just run another 10 miles, yeah. we'll figure <laughs> something out. Yeah. Yes. Right. And whether it's a kayak or a smaller boat, it forces you like, no, I'm going to figure out my pond. Mm-hmm. This is my pond. There's fish here that mm-hmm. we can catch. Yeah. You know? mm-hmm. That's crazy. Because uh, we would have probably have ran to where we won it last year. Y- yes. Well, yeah. yeah. I, was, I thought about that, too. If, if what won it for you last year, if you kind of duplicate that or totally different bite or whatever. So, And we were the same way. Yeah. Because we, don't have, we didn't have a lot of stuff up there. In fact, so... I don't remember if it was day one or day two. We did reach down a little bit, went to a spot, didn't really pan out. And then we looked and we're like, man, we're right here today. dam. Let's go ahead and hit some spots that we fished last year. But then it was kind of crystal clear down there. Mm-hmm. We didn't like it because of the clarity, mm-hmm. you know. So we're like, ah, so we weren't going to spend. I think it was day one because we decided we're not going back there for that reason. And that's what Ricky talked to, too, when he went down one yeah. on the Mississippi. But he talked about breaking down lake, same thing. And kind of like he kind of takes the middle section. Mm-hmm. He's not a big runner. Mm-mm. he said he's going to take a, a section he's going to dissect that and and we always say too there may or may not be the fish you need in that area to win mm-hmm. but i can guarantee you there's fish in there yeah, yeah absolutely and the number absolutely. of fish what i'm learning too is there's there's enough fish too there's don't think that just one or two like just like you're saying there was three quality fish in that spot right yeah. so in any given dock you got to be thinking there's there's five fish on there that could win this that, thing that to me on a like, dock yeah. right that's yeah. what happened to us last yeah, year yeah that's okay. what I mean. three of them out and that one was the five there pounder yeah now yeah. but if you go by and i know i was telling too we went by and it's like and we happen to see one and so brian you know and we've already been over this dock several times mm-hmm. right but you know he tied something else on that that gave it a better presentation and sure enough hooked it yeah. so yeah that psychology to me is amazing that if you took the same area and you said it was a pond you would spend yeah, all day right. banging that thing out that's but right if you take that same pond and you had a boat mm-hmm. you would leave it within like five seconds yep. right? but the difference is in that one situation you said like this is all i have and i have to figure it out versus yep. if you have a boat you mentally already spin yourself out that i can't catch them here because they're not here especially on smith mountain because yeah. mm-hmm. you look at the map my god it's all the same and yeah. then you talk yeah. about cuts and coves yeah. and i mean it's like i mean how many acres of just the same insane. points you talk yeah. about points i mean how many points how many secondary <laughs> oh, points? It's, it's unbelievable yeah, it's crazy and it all looks so it's good all, it all looks it all so looks good because it's got yeah. yes the big chunk rock that comes yes. out into the water yes. like anna you don't really that i know of has that i'm sure there are spots but yeah and we looked at that area that we you know won on last year but we we exited out before mm-hmm. we even got in the truck to leave you know from here because we just knew it wasn't practical mm-hmm. you know we could spend that time running down there you know we knew i shouldn't say no but had a pretty good idea that yeah we could catch fish there but mm-hmm. i mean we'd spend it's hard to say how long running down there right you know if you don't catch them or if you don't get your five Something then what do that. you do yep you know and then saturday probably wouldn't have been too bad but sunday my gosh uh, you know fishing aside the boat traffic was just i mean you got beat to death yeah i mean it's a longer run and for uh, that reason. and so and i just think it allowed us to just take what we were pretty mm-hmm. confident in you know um and, and stay disciplined mm-hmm. you know we didn't get stuck yeah. But we worked the area yeah. in which we felt pretty comfortable with right. as thorough as possible. What are some other what What are some of your choices there, Jacob, on baits? Yeah, so I mean, I was starting. I mean, this is an OG series, you know, Rapala, um, you know, Odd Defoe. I think uh, is pretty big with it. I like watching his videos. You know, um, kind of flat side. A lot of people say all oh, flat side. You know, once the weather warm or the water warms up, you know, all the 
they 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 need something more erratic you know flat side's only cold weather well i i kind of beg to differ yeah. you know i mean you can still kind of power fish a crankbait in a finesse presentation yeah you know? everybody's throwing something that's dancing around you know i i don't know that's just me um you know Same people say you can't throw a jerk bait when it gets warm exactly you know <laughs> we you know we'd be happy to talk to you about that you know i mean it's it's it, he's i'll be honest he's taught me that i mean like yeah i mean I, he's a good jerk bait fisherman in my mm-hmm. opinion um but yeah so i mean just i like little um that's not really a square bill but you know just smaller bill crankbaits mm-hmm. you know uh he likes throwing the bigger stuff and hopefully we can you know learn that a little bit more this summer at anna you know offshore the deeper plugs we're um, dying to learn that yeah we you know r- like real real offshore not just not just finding a point and fishing 20 foot of water but finding true spots contours mm-hmm. whatever and and committing to the it. discipline to, exactly to leave the rods out of the boat and go to anna for a week <laughs> or weekend <laughs> i mean yeah and just idle and, and just grab. idle um, yeah, it's so hard because like lake anna like lake anna and smith the biggest differential between that is the bait you have there and because you have blue back it changes it completely to where it, it's not just about you i like at smith mountain you can idle find a brush pile and you can probably fish that thing mm-hmm. anna's curveball is like if the blue back aren't there it doesn't matter the spot sucks and so what you got to do is kind of if you ever watch like the old Bassmasters on Lake Hartwell, like Kiwi, kind of picture that where you need to find four or five brush piles and you're just running them until the blueback hits. Because what those bass will do is they'll sink into that brush pile and they're not going to eat until they start seeing blueback overhead. Then they'll rise up and that's where you can hit them with those moving baits. And, stuff. Uh, and so depending on the time of year, it, it's understanding that blueback like behavior. And that's what's so crazy about I think Lake Anna. We talked about that. Um, with Odenkirk is like there's so much bait in there mm-hmm. and those fish i think they just cruise and follow mm-hmm. bait they're like stripers now you can also to your point though and i know we've done this where you know you look at looking at that topographic map look at your mm-hmm. contour line so you pick out you pick out eight ten places prior to that when and what i would we like whether it be a creek creek hitting a bank on an outside bend you know or yeah. or that like you say that deep water next to shallow water next mm-hmm. to a dock or a deep dock whatever features you like seeing you find those on your map yep and, and then when you there. go, like you say, keep the rods away, then go. And sometimes that's our pre-fishing. That might be what that consists of is going to that spot and seeing it on going and going over top of it, checking it out on your graph, seeing if there's fish on it. You know, you can, you know, there's a lot you can learn by looking at those maps. Mm-hmm. And once you get there, then, then check it um, or check it in a tournament. It doesn't mean that, and it may not produce right then, but if you can the more spots you can find the better yeah, you're going to be I, absolutely I think that's where mapping really helped i think my brother and i was not necessarily deep stuff and you, you'll have lakes and times when it will work but it's you can know everything where you're fishing mm-hmm. so if you have a cove or mm-hmm. whatever well if you map that whole damn thing mm-hmm. all of a sudden you found four different stumps right right and then now you just made five more spots mm-hmm. and then all of a sudden you catch one and you turn off a stump you're like well i have four mm-hmm. more stumps mm-hmm. or you can you can side scan a whole riprap bank mm-hmm. and find like four submerged points mm-hmm. or rocks that's four more spots mm-hmm. and that's what thrift kind of does in a lot of the big guys mm-hmm. is if you just yeah. graph everywhere you were going to bank fish mm-hmm. you might find three or four extra casting points mm-hmm. out there and those are the spots people don't do mm-hmm. because of live scope and travis luger talked mm-hmm. about this when we had him on everyone is off 30 in 30 feet plus water right. they're all there but they're not graphing that that weird between two and ten right and so that's the juice that people are not learning about now because <laughs> mm-hmm. you can find just so many nice little staging areas either mm-hmm. pre or post spawn there and there might be features too that are yeah. keeping them 100 percent. right it's kind of like the golden crowd there's a golden crowd down there and it's i mean they're gonna be there's a buffet <laughs> And it's gonna re- it's gonna stay yeah. hot because why? Because food's coming in, you know, or like you're saying, a wind or whatever uh, point where the wind is blowing across it. I mean, there's there's different things that you'll, you know. But what I like too, what you're all saying, and I like that is we want to learn that. Like mm-hmm. we want to learn. This is something we're not real strong with. This we're not. We don't know. Like yeah. let's 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 you know add to what we already know. What we I think know, that takes it box. to the next level. Yes. Yeah. yeah. That's- yes because now when you are when you do hit those laws and you're and you know how many people don't do that though and i think that's mm-hmm. why some people don't progress and don't get better is because they don't challenge themselves right um and try something different uh which is it's hard to do to your point but if you can do that then now when that bite's not working for you yeah. your dock bite or your shallow bite now okay we're gonna now we're gonna roll off and now you've got confidence in it because you've tried it and it's worked and one won't work every time, but you've now added another, you know, kind of weapons to the arsenal. Yeah, yeah. Or your toolbox. Well, yeah. and 
again, I'm you know I'm I'm pretty proud of it for especially day two at Smith. I mean mm-hmm. Smith Mountain Lake. You know, I mean yeah, we still caught most of our fish pretty shallow, mm-hmm. but docks, like I said earlier, are kind of our strong point. Mm-hmm. You know, but kind of you know it's interesting what you know. Mm-hmm. Um, you guys were talking about and doing we saw fish suspended under docks i mean mm-hmm. we could see them in schools mm-hmm. and it didn't matter what we threw at them you know mm-hmm. so our bread and butter was not working right like, and it's like fortunately we had fish at that time but when the sun came up and we were able to start mm-hmm. seeing these fish but it's like you know at one point it was like dang what do you do there's no fish under docks we're like mm-hmm. we're not catching what's going right. on what's you know yeah, well, so so we went out of our comfort zone in a mm-hmm. sense you know and, and it's just learning different things mm-hmm. um you know and so I think there's a lot to say to that, and but yeah, I mean I know I'm eager to learn. I think he is too, you know. I mean the offshore game clearly these guys are doing. I mean it's the new big trend, I guess. You know, mm-hmm. live scope, yeah. and 360, mm-hmm. all that. You know, um, just getting comfortable just to get out there and be able to catch some offshore mm-hmm. fish. Um, you know, consistently I think mm-hmm. is definitely something I, a goal for me mm-hmm. for sure is that the new missile trailer it is yeah so you like that so i'm a big missile baits guy you know I, you know you like the yeah, camera. <laughs> yeah absolutely you can hype up Jay. yeah so <laughs> so you know john cruz and what those guys are doing for um missile baits and whatnot i just like support local you know you guys uh, yeah, you know he's virginia out of virginia yeah. um you know i uh, I like to throw a jig around, you know, mm-hmm. we skip finesse stuff, you know, finesse worms, sinkos, nikos, whatever around docks, mm-hmm. you know, but, you know, I've added skipping, skipping jigs, finesse presentation jigs and stuff. And so I really like that trailer. Uh, it's subtle. Uh, and, and it holds up pretty well. Mm-hmm. And, and that color. It's got a good kick in action. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And that color there uh, by Missile Baits, that's mm-hmm. my, <laughs> really, really enjoy that. Mm-hmm. As you can see on your back wall, <laughs> you're out of, of mo- most of the different models. <laughs> Man, I came in here one day and I saw the it's super bug, you know. Yeah. And I saw, I was like, dang, everybody else has got my juice, you know. Like, I'm going to have to find another color, <laughs> you know. But... We just take that off the shelf and put in the back so it makes it look like it, it. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Jacob rolls in Extra and they don't have his. Bucks. So why the Nico versus the shaky head wacky worm drop shot? Like, why <laughs> he likes the shaky head? Okay, and I'm more the Nico. So yeah, I, I mean I've caught some decent fish on the shaky head. I mean back at the end of last year, very similar to that rip rap bank, I and mean, I caught three. I mean nothing major, but I mean we filled a limit. You know, in a matter of 15 minutes, I caught three back to back to back on a shaky head. But he's really got me kind of tuned in on the uh, nico um rig i mean i'll just it flat out catches fish all different sizes people can say what they want about small uh small you know rigs or you know medium action mm-hmm. spinning rods and stuff it look he's shown me it catches mm-hmm. all of them big ones small ones right. limit fillers whatever mm-hmm. um so i he he's shown me that i've picked it up um and but i, I do like to sort of shake he had mm-hmm. a little bit I, th- I think you can skip a Nico rig or a wacky oh, rig yeah, I agree so there. much better. Yeah. Um, and I just feel like, man, if we're not skipping a dock, it's like, what are you doing? <laughs> right. mm-hmm. That's our favorite. It definitely has yeah. a good, I hadn't, I hadn't thrown it, but I, when we were down there just off the dock where we were staying, I went ahead and did it. And it does have a pretty cool way it's down. And then mm-hmm. when you like, it's, it's down, but then where that hook is, it's when you pull it, it kind of like, it, it has a really cool, See, I don't yeah. weight mine that heavy. It might okay. be a little secret, so yeah. bear, it, you know, yeah, yeah. kind of flutters you. down. Yeah, that's fine. yeah so but so you you're do, getting a lot of bites you, on the you, on the drop fall, then. You're uh-huh. saying. But you okay. do weight it, right? Yes. You see a wacky worm, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I do <laughs> weight it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Just enough to get it. Yeah. Yes, yeah. exactly. And you're right. The fall. Yeah, it's it's a, it's an interesting. I can see why it's effective. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, what what's your setup for that? What are you using, like uh, line wise? I just use a ten foot braid or ten pound braid to a eight foot you go eight eight okay. foot leader or eight, eight pound, pound eight leader floor a leader yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah okay so mm-hmm. i don't even know what rod i'm turning <laughs> i just fish it works <laughs> yeah it works yeah yep there's something to be said about that too I, I i'm like that where i mean you can do all the thing whatever but it, if if it feels right and it, you can get the good hook set mm-hmm. and it was yeah. working for you then let her eat mm-hmm. like, and I go a little bit lighter, so I, I have a, it's like, I think it's, I don't even think it's seven foot, I think it's like six foot nine, like medium light mm-hmm. um, action, but, you know, it's it, it's got a pretty decent backbone, so I mean, mm-hmm. I've landed, you know, some three, three and a half pounders on it, but that kind of goes back to my roots of, you know, fishing the river, you know, kayak fishing, you know, you're not carrying around seven foot three, mm-hmm. seven foot six rod in a kayak, mm-hmm. right? And so I just kind of adopted that, you mm-hmm. know, and we try to go as light as possible, 
uh, mm-hmm. line wise, you know, but we both do a braid to a fluoro mm-hmm. leader just mm-hmm. for casting distance and durability. Mm-hmm. So it's got okay. good sensitivity. Yeah. 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 The feel, uh, for sure. That's awesome. That's awesome. Guys, where can everyone follow you at home? What are your social media handles that you want to give out? <laughs> yeah, yeah, go ahead, man. I'm just MXRacer3 on Instagram. <laughs> yeah, and mine's literally at all one. I mean, we're, we're not super big on social media, mm-hmm. but uh, definitely I think it'd be fun to, you know, get some pictures out and stuff like that. And just, yeah. you know, we love the post, you know, with the tournament trail. Um, you know, and our buddies do it, you know, Justin Rush, yeah. you know, those guys. Um, well, we the connections, the connections and relationships and part of that, like, yeah, and we, I love, you know, seeing pictures come across. And, and so, like, last thing I would ask, too, is so what other, if you're not fishing competitively, what are some local bodies of water that you like to fish? Yeah. Like, what are your yeah. little, like, I like going spots? and wading the river, over river? At our river lot on the South Fork. Honestly. Bentonville, right. That's, yep. Bentonville. That is a great, you know, people always come here and ask where to fish. So, Bentonville, like, Front Royal, Bentonville, um, Andy Guest State Park. I mean that that whole stretch through there is is a lot of good water. You know, if, whether you have a kayak or, or canoe or just wading. To your point, there's a lot of public access on that stretch. Mm-hmm. A lot of people don't know about it. You know, so there's a lot of tubers and stuff in the summertime. Oh yes, but there's, there's a ton of tubers. There's big fish though in that 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 stretch of river, and uh, like I say, a lot of people don't know mm-hmm. know about the South Fork there. Yeah. So how about you? Yeah, and see, I'm kind of the opposite. I grew up on the North Fork, you know, um, yeah, from the Woodstock area. So, I mean, pretty much everything, even down as far as Edinburgh, I haven't done anything much south of that, but um, like Burnshire Dam. How about north, like Rhodes Bridge? uh, Rhodes is a private bridge, but the Deer Rapids, anything? Yeah, so uh, Deer Rapids, uh, the town park, Charlesburg (laughs) Town Park, um, Cedar Creek area, uh, really North I mean, is a pretty, pretty section too. Yeah. And not as much public access. Exactly. So. Mm-hmm. And if, I mean, if you have a kayak, you can, mm-hmm. you know, we didn't do as much waiting. I mean, we did a couple of times, mm-hmm. but I mean, it was dad and I, I mean, sometimes we do six, eight hour floats, you mm-hmm. know, you just get in a kayak, uh, kayak and go. And mm-hmm. we've had some awesome days, uh, mostly small mouth, mm-hmm. uh, but some decent large mouth as well. And, um, that's just, I mean, that, that's how I started fishing that's cool. and I do enjoy it, but it is kind of, spoiled now having you know having to get on a boat and Mm -hmm. go out it's Mm -hmm. (laughs) to me it's definitely easier than uh hopping in a kayak and going to battle in the Mm -hmm. the rapids and stuff but uh, i still enjoy it guys i I tell you we appreciate you coming Mm -hmm. on because it's fun to uh you guys are younger but uh it, your your passion for fishing and excitement like just listening to you yeah. retell the stories too <laughs> like it makes me story huh? one more oh one, no, more. Okay. one more it was when we got third at the chicker okay that sunday yeah. it was we caught that kick or i caught the kicker fish it was like four and a half or whatever yeah yeah or whatever so we catch that off a huge cypress tree on the back and yep. we're yelling screaming or whatever and we actually continue <laughs> fishing a little bit further down and this girl is like did y'all catch a big fish or something? I heard y'all yelling. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you but, you would thought we just want a state championship football game, man. I mean, and that's just – I mean, we catch two and a half – I mean, last year, going back to the Chick, I caught one the last cast on Sunday, you know, and mm-hmm. that was my first time ever being at the Chick last okay. year. Wow. And so, that, it was Sunday, and I had a backlash. I'm picking out a backlash, but I threw a little Texas rig up under a dock, and it was a two and a half pounder that called – and I think we finished like fifth or eighth or something. I think we got eighth like, with 13 pounds. With, That's when like 20 yeah, or 20 21 yeah. won it. But yeah. I mean, we had like 10 or 11 pounds in the boat and that, you know, kind of, and that, I mean, man, we hugged each other. We're, you know, we're <laughs> yeah. high five and we're like, and that's just to me that's what it's about yeah. uh we have a blast people like i said if you put a gopro on our boat you'd be like what are these idiots doing you know but you guys hey. keep it up you got people following you <laughs> yeah you guys yeah are, you're uh, gonna be blowing up here yeah i guess uh i guess maybe we are looking at the gopro yeah. we gotta get something in the boat i guess <laughs> i mean it's entertaining at best we yeah. you know so no, well, no we certainly just thank to you guys. share the information and just you know that's mm-hmm. just pretty that's pretty cool because that's what we all we all share this passion for fishing yep uh going after a fish you know and it brings us that excitement so regardless of how old you are doesn't matter like yeah. we're all and that's what i get a kick out of those old timers too like i mean ray and Randy ray's 70 and you know and there's so it doesn't matter again young or old like they're all out there they mm-hmm. we all get the same excitement from going out there and catching these fish i so. love hearing ray's stories oh he yeah just cracks like when me you up. said he double set double hook set that one at anna or <laughs> yeah. eating his peanut butter sandwich yeah. oh my gosh yeah. it he is and he he is one that just he loves fishing he does. and it doesn't yeah. matter like how big the fish are he, he super loves, humble yeah super humble loves the fish and i've watched ray you know since he's been working here and just he's 
and being retired helps too because he's like he's watching a lot of shows and and he's got many more rods and much more and he's always coming in here he'll watch something you know come in the joke too is like secret bait you know he won't tell us he lies about everything <laughs> and his, his lips are moving that's how you know he's lying <laughs> he comes in and he's like he'll see something on bill dance you know outdoors or whatever you know and he's like he'll come in and tell jenny you know, can you order this or whatever you know so <laughs> so i'm always giving a hard time what's the secret bait today ray but in saying that too i gotta say though and he always thinks i'm lying to him when i'm not i tell him straight up truth honest but he thinks lines so it doesn't matter what i tell him <laughs> but i told him about a rogers jig too at Anna. i always had a lot of luck with rogers jig down there and so anyway so he had a little bit of success on that too so again to me that's what it's all about having success you know so if you yep. can share something that can help somebody else go out and catch fish and enjoy that i mean that's like you said jacob that's what it's all about mm. so that, that is. i mean there's a there's a lot of a lot of really solid anglers in this mm. area you know our, like mm. you said our least competitive you know mm. we were Oz, look we're you know we're having fun you mm. know we're happy with the success that's we've true. had but you know we can always strive to be better but yeah you know, we're, we're having a good time yeah. you know we're not trying to hide nothing we're just yeah. you know trying to find what works for us and find new things that work right, for that's us, right you know so that's right um, yeah. well, i wish you guys luck and you're in fifth and they'll, they'll probably keep climbing and see where it goes from there but uh thank you for coming on and thanks for having and me. yeah you thank you guys and, so much for having us yeah, no pleasure for sure I was we'll be, have you on again with another tournament yeah, win we're yeah, gonna, keep, we're gonna sweet. be keeping an eye on you <laughs> yeah. I don't be paying close attention when you come in here <laughs> it was our goal to get on here well good yeah so, it's, it's really cool. cool well yeah we we're honored to have you guys and yeah. please keep up the good work um again please follow the, follow these guys on their social media handles Please give them a follow. Again, guys, please like this video. We're trying to get up to 20 likes for this video. It really helps us out with the YouTube algorithm. Like and subscribe to the channel. This is Fishing the DMV. We are the largest, fastest growing fishing podcast and radio show in the DMV area. See you next time. Bye. You're listening to Fishing the DMV with your hosts, Thomas Ahrens and Jared Mounts. Fishing the DMV is brought to you by Jake's Bait and Tackle, located in Winchester, Virginia. If that doesn't get you jacked up, I don't know what will.